Scenes from the USO's annual Turkey for Troops distribution. 1,200 service members in the region will receive a complete Thanksgiving meal this year. Hello and welcome to Mead Week. I'm Brian Spann. Also this week, Fort Mead wins 2020 Army Community Partnership Award, the annual German-Italian POW Remembrance, and the Post Cemetery is getting a facelift. These stories and more, but first, with coronavirus infection rates spiking in Maryland and across the country, there's a lot of discussion going on concerning the health protection condition. In this week's installation town hall, Garrison Commander Colonel Chris Nyland addressed a possible move to HP Con Charlie. He began by stressing that decisions are always based on providing the safest environment for warfighters and support personnel on post. The question on many people's minds is how a move to HP Con Charlie would affect Garrison services. And just a reminder here that things evolve rapidly and changes may have already been implemented by the time you see this. Currently the Garrison staff is reviewing every service we, we conduct or we provide at Bravo and comparing it to what we did last time at Charlie. And I've got a, a, a very substantial spreadsheet going through those details right here. We were just looking at it earlier today. Every directorate's identifying the services, what services are essential and how they're going to provide those safely. Um, and whether it's going to be virtually or in person, okay? And, and, and what I mean in, in these things are it's things like child care, ID cards, um, the gym, and health services. Some of these things were closed during HP Con Charlie previously. Uh, they may remain if we believe, if the public health emergency officer and everyone believes we can continue to do it safely, they may remain um, if we go back to HP Con Charlie um, in the near future. The Colonel added that the goal is to provide as many services as possible as safely as possible. There's much more from the Colonel and you can watch the Town Hall in its entirety on our Facebook page. Just click on videos. And stay tuned to all our social media platforms including the Digital Need page on the website for any changes to Fort Meade's pandemic response. In other news, the Army announced the winners of the 2020 Community Partnership Awards. Fort Meade is one of 10 installations selected for demonstrating partnerships that improve quality of life for soldiers and their families, enhance readiness and modernization, and build stronger community relationships. In Fort Meade's case, the fort was recognized for its partnership with the Central Maryland Chamber of Commerce and the Community Covenant Agreement. You can find more on this story on Digital Mead. Meanwhile, every November, German and Italian military attaches from Washington, D.C. join with Fort Meade to remember the 33 German and two Italian prisoners of war interred in the Fort Meade Cemetery. We come together in some uncertain times, and I'll be honest, the team uh, asked me uh, to reconsider whether we should gather today uh, to, to do this event because of the, because of the COVID pandemic. And, uh, and, and what I told them is that um, despite these trying times, uh, it is absolutely vital that we not only honor the memory of the, those who went before us, but we reaffirm our strong relationships and bonds. Today we stand at 33 graves of German and two Italian prisoners of war who died between 1944 and 1947. Some of them were only 20 years old, like Franz Eberholt, Paul Mell, and Gustav Ziegler and I'm sure they would all have a story to tell us. To the thousands of American soldiers who offered their lives to give the next generation of Europeans a future of freedom, democracy, and prosperity. In a related story, you might have noticed that the ceremony this year was held outside the cemetery gates. That's because the cemetery is currently undergoing a massive restoration project. We spoke with Austin Bisline from the Directorate of Public Works Engineering Division about the project. We're trying to update the grounds, uh, replace the, uh, the lawn, and uh, make sure we have the right fertilizer to make sure we have uh, nice green grass for years to come. Um, we're going to be putting in an automatic sprinkler system. We're also going to be realigning some of the headstones, all, all of the headstones, and then replacing about 80 of them, ones that have shown uh, a lot of wear and that sort of thing. In other news, a couple of reminders from the Soldier for Life Transition Assistance Program. They're hosting a virtual employer day networking event on December 4th and on December 11th. The two-day event features six potential employers each day. They'll discuss the company's mission, culture, job opportunities, the application process, and much more. The Transition Assistance Office says you should be prepared to engage with employers online as well as following up with them to continue the conversation and submit your resume. You can join for one or both days. Here's the email address and phone number. And that's Mead Week for this week. I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Mead TV and the Fort Mead Public Affairs Office, have a great weekend and a great Mead Week.